in the year 2014 sally and myself we got into the covenant of marriage and 3 years later we found ourselves to be pregnant to confirm this news we go to the doctor and the doctor tells us to do an ultrasound and get the reports so when we do the ultrasound and go to the doctor with the reports the doctor gives us this great news that the pregnancy is confirmed and the second thing the due date will be between 20th and 21st of july when we heard this we were really really blessed and happy and really excited because if our child will be born on the 21st of july then zelia and our child will be celebrating their birthday on the same day just as i am celebrating my birthday along with my dad on the same day so we went back home happy and uh, we were praying for the child to be born on the 21st of july and things went very good every time we went to the doctor the doctor gave us good news uh, there was a uh, such a goodness of god which was flowing in every situation of our lives on 23rd of june 2017 at night zelia she was struggling to sleep her legs were swollen and she told me this in the royston it is very difficult for me to sleep please put some pillows under my leg i knew that uh, she was having pain in her legs and on 24th we had a routine checkup when we go to the doctor the doctor does all the checkup and everything seems to be normal and zelia happens to mention to the doctor that her movements were very less that she could not feel uh, much movements of the baby when the doctor heard this he told us to remove the ultrasound as soon as possible and come with the report so we did the ultrasound we came with the report to the doctor and the doctor told us it will be too risky for us uh, to keep the child uh, more longer we have to get the child out on this day when we heard this we were really shocked because all this 7 8 months we've been praying that our child will be born on the 21st of july and here it was 24th of june one month before the due date and the doctor is telling us that we need to deliver the child so we were really shattered and shocked the doctor also had mentioned to us that her sugar levels had gone a bit high and the legs were swollen and because of that there was no much blood flowing so he did not want to risk the life of the baby and that's the reason he told us we have to do uh, the surgery as soon as possible so we went back home and uh, we had not even packed our bags so we packed our bags we prayed together and we went back to the hospital when i was going in the hospital i noticed the weather out there was very gloomy it was very dark as if it was about to rain and i was looking at zelia she was in pain her legs were full swollen at one moment she opened the door and she told me i want to stretch my leg i said don't do it zelia it's too risky just hold on for some time we'll be in the hospital and when we went to the hospital when we reached the gate i seen a bright sunshine the weather just changed instantaneously and i knew deep in my heart that god was in control and it gave me great confidence to look forward everything that was happening at that time was like a surprise to us because we were not at all ready to welcome the baby and not at all ready for that moment 
but all what we could do was trust God and know that God is in it. We believe in the power of praying and seeking the Lord, which reminds us of a man of God. You know, he saw while praying and he narrates towards the scenario where he's seen me kneeling before my bed, praying and seeking the Lord. And in fact, he mentions to us, you know, what I used to pray. And I believe that uh, this prayer was honored by God. And as we reached to the hospital, I was directly taken to get myself ready for the C-section. And uh, just before I could enter the OT for a C-section, you know, the doctor visited me. And uh, when the doctor visited me, he knew that I was very keen on a vaginal birth. And uh, he knew that I was not happy with this decision of C-section. But since at that time, uh, it was the best thing uh, to do. So we went forward with a C-section and that is what the doctor knew and he just said it to me like you know uh, Zelia are you still wondering you know uh, are you still in the hope that you are going to have a vaginal birth he he just said this to me uh, maybe just as a fun or you know just that way but what he said to me was uh, was like a prick on my heart it really hit me very badly and uh, since I was being taken to OT you know I just left it there and uh, soon um, Soon, within no time, at 3 p.m., baby was born, and uh, the doctor said it's a baby girl. I was very happy, and he said the baby is fine and uh, the baby is healthy. So that is all what I wanted to hear. And uh, he gave me to meet the baby, and after that, the baby was taken. As I was on that bed, you know, where they were doing the C-section, I was there. All these thoughts started bombarding my mind, you know. I had a very smooth pregnancy until towards the last few weeks where the sugar levels went a bit high and I had a lot of swelling due to which the blood circulation also was also not happening too well. Otherwise, everything was very smooth. I had this question to God, why towards the end did it all turn out to be this way? You know, so I had this question to God, why? And our daughter Eliana Rose was born and when the doctors uh, brought Zelia out of the OT, I looked straight in Zelia's eyes and I knew that she was sad because of the caesarean. Nevertheless, we looked forward to be wonderful parents to our child and things changed when Eliana Rose came in our lives. We forgot about this small incident and we continued to thank the Lord. Three years down the line, one fine evening while Eliana was playing with her friends, you know, there was some discussion about the siblings and on that note, Eliana replies and says to them, my mother will get a baby sister for me. You know, when she said that, I was in fact shocked to hear from her because we never had such kind of a conversation with her. And at that time, all I could do was, you know, just smile, smile at her. What she said was something small, but I had an entire flashback about Eliana's birth, the entire situation, and also about the prick that I had on my heart. You know, it all just came up. And then later I just uh, shared this with Royston and Royston calmly said, you know, let's pray about it. But it was not a small deal for me. It was something really big because it was quite very disturbing. As I said, you know, everything just came up. Something about the past came up. And the Bible tells us that, you know, above all else, guard your heart because everything flows from it. So we didn't want, I didn't want anything of my past experience or the past uh, uh, hurt that I have, you know, to get, to carry forward. So we requested our spiritual mentors to pray for us. So you see, it's very important to have people in our life who will pray for us, you know, who will stand by us, not only in our strength, but also in our weaknesses. And we are glad, you know, to have so much understanding and encouraging and supported uh, spiritual mentors. That was the first step that we took. Following that, you know, I started getting dreams where I would see myself pregnant, you know, and there were two specific dreams 
uh, which which god had shown me and at that time you know i we didn't understand it but yes we did pray about it and towards the end you know towards the end we seen certain things coming to pass certain things working exactly the same way you know what we had seen in our dreams even before we had conceived it was in the month of december you know one afternoon i was having lunch and royston happens to come home at that time and as he enters uh, the house he tells me you know that he has got something for me and at that same time he gives me the book and uh, the book is about a supernatural child but but i tell you the moment you know when he's giving me that book i just sensed in my spirit that god is talking to me something you know i did not know the book was about supernatural un- until i got it in my hand but the time that he was giving me the book in my hand i know that god is talking to me something very powerful and when i took the book in my hand you know i just read it and it was supernatural child but and i was like so so overwhelmed by that book and i knew in my heart that this time it's going to be a different story everything about my past the past experience the past uh, experience about the child but it it is all over you know i was just set free from that hurt i was set free from that wound and i knew that this time it's going to be totally a different story and when i got the book in my heart i was so happy because i knew that god is talking to me psalms 127 verse 3 tells us that children are the gift from the lord and the fruit of the womb is a reward you know so i surrendered to this word knowing that a child is a gift from god everything is not in our hand everything is in the hands of the lord so we surrender to this word saying that a child is a gift from the lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward and later in the month of january we got to know that uh, we are pregnant once again and uh, we were so very excited because we believed and we knew in our heart that this time is going to be a total new experience a different experience and a different story so i was all excited in fact we both were all excited and looking forward you know how the lord is going to lead us and i remember you know we started the year 2021 with this word from the book of isaiah which says that i create the fruit of the lips and this word was so much you know rooted into my heart that i knew that whatever i speak has power whatever i'm i speak or whatever we speak god is going to create it god is going to honor that word and he is going to create it so all i knew that this pregnancy since i had conceived now okay uh, i knew that all what i wanted to see in the baby in the child all what i had want to see in the pregnancy i had to speak okay because i have this in mind that you know if you if you look at the world portrays childbirth or pregnancy as a very you know a difficult phase a phase where you struggle a phase of pain you know um, a phase of so much of trauma but in the bible i knew that god has designed it for us in a very beautiful way and i wanted to experience every bit of it and uh, you know learning the word of god i started as i spoke about that book about supernatural child but every day you know i started uh, reading that book without without I, sh- i wouldn't miss a single day in fact i read it over and over again and that that book really encouraged me you know to go into the bible into the word of god and see how beautifully god has designed uh, things for us and I came to this conclusion and this confidence that my body has been designed by God and my body knows exactly how to nourish the baby in my womb how to carry the baby and how to birth the baby so I was you know just relaxed knowing that God has designed everything perfectly for us it was a first trimester and in the first trimester there are a lot of hormonal changes in your body you will feel like you know a vomiting you will feel nausea you will feel morning sickness and there will be a lot of different ty- kinds of things different women will feel feel different things so 
I started praying about it because in my previous pregnancy, yes, there was not, nothing much that happened, but here and there I would feel uh, nausea, here and there I would feel little vomiting, but not much. But this time, you know, I, I, I wanted to experience God's grace at every moment. So I started praying about it. And uh, the entire three months, you know, not a single day I had nausea, not a single day vomiting. I was just normal. And all this thing, you know, started bringing more and more excitement in, in us. And uh, we started getting more deeper into the Word of God. And uh, God was preparing us in every area. He was preparing me physically. He was preparing us spiritually. He was preparing us uh, emotionally. You know, every area God was preparing us, um, uh, preparing us and we were getting more confident in God's word. And uh, every day was a journey where we learned something new. Then towards, you know, towards uh, the end of the first trimester, we, I was sent for all the um, blood reports and uh, the sugar level report you know it came uh, it came that my levels it came under the pre-diabetic range okay and the doctor mentioned to me that since the last time the sugar levels had uh, gone a, a bit high this time there are more chances there are chances you know more higher chances that it will shoot up later in the pregnancy but uh, Deep down in my heart, I knew that God had a different story. I was holding on to this word that this time it's totally going to be a different story. And when I came home, I started praying about it. And as I said, you know, God is going to create the fruit of my lips. So I was speaking whatever I wanted. I wanted the sugar levels to be normal. I, you know, in fact, I wanted my sugar levels to be completely normal and when I was praying about it when I was thanking God and agreeing with his word you know I felt in my heart God spoke to me and he said that you know the next report Zelia is going to have it it's going to be all normal and I started rejoicing over this word above all I believe that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and I am the redeemed of the Lord so therefore no sickness no disease no pain Nothing that is not of God can survive in my body. Then in the in the uh, previous pregnancy, I had a really a lot of swelling, and um, and my feet were most of the time they I used to feel very tired. And this time I started speaking this word, and I said, the children of Israel, you know, they walked in the wilderness for forty years, yet their feet didn't swell. And I started agreeing with this word and applying to me that this time my feet will not swell, my feet will not feel tired and um, everything what the word says about me, I agreed to it and I started thanking God for that word and speaking that word over my life. And every day we started seeing the fruit of it. The best time that I would enjoy was when I used to go for a walk because whenever I went for a walk, I knew that God is to talk to me. God is to talk to me other times as well, but during the walk time, it was a special time. So when we had uh, spoken to our uh, doctor and uh, she was about a wee back and she said that, you know, I will uh, we'll talk about it or we'll see towards the end of the pregnancy. But I was not very so happy about this answer. So I went it out to the Lord, whatever is in my heart, I would vent it out to the Lord. And uh, the Lord put this in my heart, you know, Zelia, I'm your midwife, you know, you don't need to worry. And this word gave me so much of confidence that uh, I have the Holy Spirit with me as my midwife. And uh, the, the Lord would actually, you know, show me even the next appointment, what the doctor would tell me. And uh, this brought again so much of encouragement to hold on to him like he was he god was my rock you know anything i hear i would you know come and catch hold of him you know i would keep myself we would keep ourselves yielded to the lord and uh, the next thing what i did was we kept ourselves connected to people who would speak faith you know who would speak what the word speaks because I told myself one thing I am what the word says I am and I can do what the word says I can do so we made sure that we would surround ourselves with people who would speak faith if there was anyone who would speak to me 
which contradicts the word of god i would make sure i keep a distance from them so that really helped me surrounding myself with faith people with people who will encourage me you know people who will motivate me people who will make me stand and move towards our vision move towards you know our goal move towards our dream you know faith without works is dead so whatever i believed i made sure you know i put it into practice even about eating you know i asked the lord for his grace so that i would eat whatever is needed and not over it because in the previous pregnancy i had put 20 plus weight you know it was a massive weight gain and i didn't want the same thing to be repeated this time so i asked the lord to fill me with grace so that i would watch what i eat and that i would not overeat there was one thing specific in my diet that i followed was eating seasonal fruits and seasonal vegetable or anything that was seasonal because you see our god is a perfect god and he has created everything perfectly not only us but everything perfectly and um, you know for an example a mango in the summer season you will get this mango you know our body at that time requires that kind of nourishment that kind of vitamin and minerals that a mango has during summer season our body is in need of nourishment that this particular fruit can give us so it's very important to have something that's seasonal and this is what you know i followed all the 9 months and even now and even before the 9 months you know i followed this and uh, it was now the end of the uh, second trimester i was sent for a blood test again especially to check the sugar levels and uh, when the report came you will not believe the levels that were under pre diabetic it had come under non diabetic and it was just a overwhelming moment i knew that god is in control and he is heading us towards something that is so beautiful something you know that that even a human mind can sometimes don't understand and i knew that god we knew that god was in it and all what we could do was rejoice and we knew that we are heading towards our dream we knew that we are heading towards our desire what god is going to do this time is totally going to be different and it's totally going to be all together beautiful everything went by so quickly that it was the end of our pregnancy and it was time you know to birth the baby and um, the concern came about my weight again in total this time i had gained only 5 kg from 66 i was 71 and the doctor was very much concerned about the growth of the baby but whenever the whenever the ultrasound was done to track the growth of the baby everything showed normal but uh, every time i went the doctor would always tell me eat make sure you eat make sure you eat and i would keep telling the doctor that uh, you know i'm eating every 2 hours and uh, i'm eating quite well and i'm having a very good appetite but um, all these things really didn't bother us because we knew that god is in it the lord is leading us and god has created us and designed us perfectly to nourish the baby and it was the 37th week where again we went for a regular checkup so at the time when uh, we went the doctor directly asked me so what have you all decided and she asked us that i was taken aback by hearing this and i just said uh, doctor what i mean what are you trying to say and she says that i'm planning a repeat c section the coming weekend when i heard this you know i had no words to reply and uh, at that moment royston just intervened and uh, asked the doctor like if she could give us some more time the reason why she said about a repeat c section was considering the risk you know she told me one thing was your health and baby's health that's very important for us and um, vbac comes with risk it also comes with you know benefits but it equally ha- has a lot of risk and considering the risk she said it would be better to go for a repeat c section but deep down my heart i was not ready for this because i knew that god has a different story for us and we were looking forward for a vaginal delivery this time 
and all this nine months however the lord carried us however the lord led us we knew that god was heading us towards that desire towards that dream and we didn't want to give up yes we had doubts we had discouragement we had you know we were anxious we had anxiety we had all those things but what kept us to the ground was i create the fruit of your lips so we knew that we have to speak what we want yes you know there are risk and there are so many things that are there but we knew that we have to speak what we want so after that you know uh, we 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 tried another two three doctors who gave us a similar a reply and we knew that it is time to shift from this current doctor because this is the exact scenario what i'd seen in my dream and when this thing happened you know i was reminded of that dream and uh, i told royston that you know we have to shift to another doctor uh, who will who will uh, support us in this decision it's very important see in pregnancy or any other time it's very important to have a doctor who will support you a doctor who you are very to a very uh, free to speak what's in your heart so we we move on to the next uh, doctor and uh, we happen to tell her whatever you know whatever is our desire and uh, the first time when i met her and she spoke to me she spoke to me exactly what was in my heart you know and i knew that i need to stay with this doctor because whatever point she mentioned to me she mentioned exactly all what was there in my heart all this 9 months and that gave us confidence you know to go ahead with this doctor of course we did pray about it and uh, we were confident enough to go ahead with her one day i met my friend who is a very good doctor in gmc and uh, he happened to ask me how is zelia so i told him that zelia is expecting and the next thing he asked me was uh, the first pregnancy what was it so i told him it was a cesarean and directly he commented that uh, uh, this time also it will be a cesarean and then i told him doctor we want to try for a v back we want to try for a normal delivery he said royston it's very risky considering the <clears throat> the scar which was uh, in the first uh, delivery and he told me please don't attempt it and when i heard this i was really concerned i was uh, nervous i i was in doubts so a couple of nights later i met zelia and for dinner across the table you know we are talking to one another and uh, i just uh, look in her eyes and i tell her uh, zelia whatever happens uh, no one thing that uh, i allowed you to go through all this to believe in what you believed and to fulfill what god had called you to do you know when i said this uh, she was filled with tears and uh, so was i and we both cried that was a very emotional and a touching moment for both of us you know another thing that helped us to reach to our finish line was that i had a supportive husband not i had i still have a supportive husband it's very important to have a very supportive partner and this support you know this encouragement helped us to reach our dream this is one thing that really helped us to reach our finish line i had a supportive husband i still have a supportive husband you know there were times where uh, Royston is to tell me Zelia what is what you are believing is too high for me to accept and all what i would <laughs> tell Royston was you just stand by me that's all i need and 
yes he did the same thing there were times you know it was really difficult for him to accept what i would speak you know what i would really desire but he said whatever it is i will stand by you and that gave me a lot of courage you know to hold on to press on and to remain what the lord had put in my heart so if there are right now husbands who are watching me make sure you give your total support to your wife there's no one you know who can fill that void in your wife's life then you you are the person if you are watching me know that you are the person and i'm really blessed to have uh, royston in my life so the next thing was um, you know the doctor mentioned that if i wouldn't get uh, contractions by the 17th of september uh, she would uh, she had told me to get admitted by then but i trusted that you know i trusted that the baby will be born on the day that the lord has ordained that was our prayer every day we would pray you know that the baby will be born on the day that the lord has ordained not when i want or not when the doctor wants but on the day the that the lord has ordained though the due date was was the end of september but uh, you know since i had a previous c section there were a lot of limitations but our god is a limitless god okay so uh, then comes the 17th of september you know as usual i had gone for a walk and uh, after i came back from the walk uh, the doctor gave me a call she had just given me a call to check on me and she just generally asked me how i'm feeling and uh, i said i'm feeling fine but there are there is a little stomach tightening that i'm getting here and there and she had initially mentioned if you get a slightest of pain make sure you rush to the hospital because she was very much concerned about the scar and she didn't want to take any risk and uh, she said uh, and she just repeated she said i had mentioned to you to get any pain please rush and she said please come and see me and and in fact she added and she said i just called to check on you and to tell you you know not to come today because the beds were full you know and uh, maybe come on the following day but since i mentioned this to her she was keen you know uh, so that i come and meet her at the hospital but deep down my heart i was not ready because i thought that you know uh, i thought that if, if it doesn't all fit into that thing you know maybe i would be taken for repeat c section this thought started coming to me but i just you know i, I just came back to my senses and i said you know this is not what god has plan for us i came to this word that it's going to be a total different and a beautiful story so royston you know just called our uh, one of our spiritual friend and asked us to pray for us before we could head to the hospital so the man of god uh, prayed for us and he said that you know sister you will deliver the baby with the power of the holy spirit that one word i just got and I, and we left our house with that word thanking god that god i will deliver this baby with the power of the holy spirit in fact when i entered the hospital i entered the hospital with that same word in my heart that i am going to deliver the baby with the power of the holy spirit and so we checked in the hospital and um, deep in my heart uh, i knew that uh, god would uh, give us the desires of our hearts you know when i seen that room when the nurse showed us that room it was a perfect room it was a big room and it had a big balcony just outside and when i seen it i knew that uh, god had prepared that place for us see god cares for the minute details of our life the bible says he knows the count of our hair he knows how much hair we have on our head he knows everything about us and i had not shared this desire to zelia that i want to have a good room you know when we talk about hospitals you know many times you know the rooms are not according to our taste but this room was so beautiful and it really felt like a home so i knew 
God had prepared this place for us. So we met the doctor and the doctor examined me and uh, she gave us a good news and also a bad news. The good news was she said you are already in labor and uh, you have started dilating as well. And the bad news was she said she was not happy with the uh, position of baby's head. The head was not completely fixed. So she was not happy with that. And uh, I think we we were we had gone to the hospital around at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, she said that uh, she will she will give us time until maybe 4 or 5 o'clock. And uh, she said that I could be in our room. So we were happy that uh, we had started dilating and uh, we were happy that we were the contractions had already begun. Another thing was uh, I never liked to call that I would be in labor. Labor means you work. Okay? I knew that the Lord was in complete control and God would you know take control of this birth so all what I would what I said in the ninth month was contractions you know that I, I will have contractions I never use the term labor because for me labor is like work I'm not going to struggle you know the Lord will help me even on that uh, delivery bed where I'm going to birth the baby you know the Lord is going to help me and I'm not going to struggle because that is how God has designed everything perfectly for us so I refrained myself from calling, I mean, uh, saying this word labor, I would say contractions. Because God created the fruit of your lips. I was holding on to this word. You know, another point I, I missed, you know, I had mentioned this thing. It's very important, you know, to surround yourself with faithful people, you know, and we surrounded ourselves with faithful people. You know, there were times when we used to feel discouraged, you know, where sometimes we would uh, hear something that would you know not really uh, keep us uh, uh, going and uh, there was one day such kind of a situation came and uh, my mother reminded me of the scripture from Habakkuk which says you know make a vision you know make a vision whatever you want to see you know make a vision and uh, that was just right before uh, the delivery so you know i i put it on my book and we visioned how our birth is going to be and uh, the same way there were times and there were situations where we would feel discouraged you know and but there was somebody or the other one who would just come up and speak that word speak that encouragement which would you know put us back on our track and keep us focused on it so coming back to that point, uh, we were sent back to our room and when we were in our room, all what we, what we could do was worship God. Another thing what I did was, in fact, I did it all my nine months. I would love sitting on a birthing ball and relax myself and, you know, worship God or have a time with God. So even when I was going to the hospital, I took that birthing ball along with me. And even in the room, I was with my birthing ball. So I just sat on that ball and uh, we worshipped God, we thanked God and all these things you know didn't take place only in that room it was what we did all these nine months it had become a lifestyle you know all these nine months it was the same thing that was happening in our lives what happened in that room you know we moved about we were walking and uh, you know doctor said if i would want to do some kind of like squats or whatever it is you know i would free I was free to do all that. Yes, I did all that. But my base was God. You know, I trusted God. Not all these things. I trusted, you know, my body that was designed by God. And I trusted that my God, my body would birth the baby. So we were given time. And then right again after this at run about 5 p.m. Again, the doctor comes and checks me. And she says, you have progressed, but not really happy with the, uh, with the progress. And then again, we were given some uh, more time. Even at that time, yes, the doubts did come. If you are ever thinking that we were all pumped up, no, there were doubts. You, I, was I discouraged? Yes, I was discouraged. Was I anxious? Yes, I was anxious. Was I slipping off from my track? Yes, I was. But, you know, time and again, I went to the word. You know, all these nine months, whatever the Lord put in my heart, you know, I was 
remembering all that i i started reminding myself you know how god protected me you know how my reports beautifully you know came well you know how every time the lord was with me and how he instructed me how he led me how he led me to this doctor you know how he led me to do the decisions we started reminding ourselves okay zelia has just mentioned about doubts even i had my doubts um, the first thing like uh, when we had gone in the hospital the the nurse um, told me to arrange blood you know you have to give a application and you have to give it to the hospital so that they can keep the blood ready you know i was just wondering why blood because we are going to have a normal delivery but uh, the nurse explained me if things are complicated we have to go for a emergency operation and for that reason we require blood and uh, anyways i took that form and went uh, to the hospital and gave that form and uh, those doctors kept that blood ready so yes there were doubts uh, but i know one thing uh, that god was in control of everything so at around 7 pm uh, doctor comes and she tells me now we have to take a zelia uh, to the labor room and um, she goes inside you know i always wanted one thing uh, to be with her during the delivery you know this was my deepest prayer i have never mentioned this to zelia but god knew my heart and um, and i asked the doctor the doctor can i be there and doctor say why not you please come inside so god answered my prayer in 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 that hospital you know last time i i i could not be with celia uh, but this time i i could be with her and um, it was really really amazing i have wanted to be there so that i could just encourage her and for her to know that i'm there whatever it is i'm there i'm praying for you and uh, we are going to come up with this beautiful testimony for the glory of god so zelia's contraction started happening on a regular time interval and uh, the doctor was happy uh, but also the doctor had told me see royston the head is not at fixed so uh, as long as the head is not fixed it is not possible for a normal delivery so uh, whenever she said that thing again i would close my eyes and just pray lord please fix up the head so uh, time went by the contractions started increasing and i started remembering you know some some people had told me in you know, the during under delivery uh, especially during contractions the women they start screaming and they start uh, kicking you know on a lighter note you know i would not go near zelia's legs um, because you know i i would think like you know if what if it pains her and then she gives me a you know big kick uh, on my face you know it was just uh, just a thought which came but uh, you know i knew god was in control and um, i also used to wonder why is zelia not screaming why is she not shouting and everybody whoever i have met you know they say you know child body is so painful and this and that and here zelia was uh, just like you know saying the scriptures saying the holy spirit is my midwife saying the lord will deliver this child for me i was truly amazed by your faith and um, the nurse uh, came and checked zelia regularly you know and uh, they used to say okay you know to the time you know your time is very near and uh, i was just uh, praying and i was just um, hoping that uh, the childbirth uh, would be done the delivery would be done very fast 
you know i remember instant in in that uh, labor room a nurse coming and uh, just hearing what celia was saying and um, she said this words bhai tumche magne bore powerful you know and that moment i happened to share about rofe tv to her and then and about our faith so it was a really beautiful moment and then the doctors came and uh, they they checked her uh, they had also put a heart monitor so that um, they will check the heartbeat of the baby and i had asked the question uh, to the doctor uh, during the contractions if the scar opens up how will you come to know and the doctor had told me uh, royston and the heartbeat is going to drop rapidly so it is very important for us to uh, have the heartbeat constantly monitored and uh, so the doctor will come regularly and check the heartbeat and she will say okay everything seems to be normal there was one incident um, that suddenly the heartbeat dropped for a moment and uh, the doctors just rushed in and uh, they told me to move out and uh, i went out and they closed the door and i was just outside i was just like lord uh, please help us you know it was a very worry moment for me i did not know what was happening inside because i was not with celia and then the doctors come out and uh, she tells me uh, royston uh, okay the heartbeat is normal okay but uh, i'm not really happy with the progress okay and uh, we don't have much time here and there the baby's heartbeat started dropping and uh, because baby's heartbeat was dropping you know doctor would just wanted to check whether the baby had passed meconium so she uh, breaks the water bag to check whether the baby had passed meconium so after breaking the water bag you know uh, she comes to know everything was clear baby had not uh, passed meconium and uh, that worry was gone but since now the water bag was broken we didn't have much time so she still gave me time the contractions were coming and then uh, finally she comes yes and when she broke the water bag i was a bit disappointed because now we don't have much time you know once the water is gone out you cannot give the baby for a longer time in the womb so i was disappointed but yet again i didn't allow the disappointment you know to over overwhelm me i still kept myself focused on the word then uh, what she does was the contractions were not that stronger so finally she comes and she says she says to me that this is the final tool i have you know she gives me this oxytocin so the process is speeded up and you know and the delivery is done and uh, when she says you know this is the last tool i have or you have to progress if not then we are going to take you for a c section and uh, when she said that you know again you know i felt that i should give up that feeling did come you know just let go give it up like you know why you want to still hold on but no still that word came back to me you know i will deliver this baby as quick as easy and as lively as a hebrew woman you know all this 9 months whatever i meditated on whatever you know i spoke whatever i declared whatever you know the, the word that i kept into my heart in that labor room all these things started coming alive to me every word you know started coming alive to me it was a moment you know where where i we were in mixed emotions and it was a moment where the word of god was fighting for us you know in fact there was one christian app that i used to hear every day it is called a, a christian hypno birthing a very good app so in fact royston asked me whether i would want to hear that but at that moment i didn't want to hear anything you know but 
the word of god fought for us you know the words would simply just flow out from my mouth you know the scriptures would flow out from my mouth so this i would encourage myself no i will give birth you know i will deliver as quick as easy and as lively as a hebrew woman i kept thanking god that this blessing is over uh, my life so after this oxytocin was given you know the contractions started speeding up the next question was you know i'm sure all of you all have this in mind were they painful or was it like painless you know every contractions i did feel you know there was tightening that was happening everything i felt but the lord kept me in control you know i was in my senses it didn't hurt i had all the pressure you know the the muscles you know um, the uterus contracting yes i did feel i felt that pressure i felt that intensity but the lord was in control it did not hurt every time you know that contraction uh, came all i wanted was royston's hand i just wanted to hold his hand that's it and uh, you know there was one moment where royston was put out and and at that time you know that contraction just came and the doctor was just right beside me so i just took i just asked the doctor whether i could hold her hand and she just asked me whether i was missing my husband <laughs> and then she said you know that she would send him inside at that contraction all i would want was to hold royston's hand that's it and the lord kept me in control it was such a beautiful moment you know every contraction i knew was getting me closer to the baby so when the contraction you know i knew the contraction is coming so i was not afraid of it i was happy because it was getting me closer to the baby every contraction that was coming i knew it was getting me closer to the baby i knew the time is coming i knew the much waited time you know it's 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 near you know it's at hand knowing that we didn't have much time um i was uh, getting disappointed also the anesthetic doctor had come so you know as a precaution you know if things are not progressing then anselia will be uh, have to go undergo an operation so uh, things were looking very gloomy they were not looking uh, positive and uh, I was there with Celia you know and uh, she looks at me and um, I look at her and she says this words very powerful words Royston the world may not be with us but the word is with us you know when she said this words I could feel the presence of God in that room the atmosphere in that room totally changed and I knew that God was in control once again and I go out from that uh, room and um, my mother calls me and I tell them to pray my sister uh, my dad I tell them to pray and uh, my mother in law also calls me and uh, she says uh, she asks me how is Celia uh, uh, doing and I tell her I don't know why I say these words uh, mommy uh, within the next 10 minutes Celia is going to deliver. It was like a prophetic word which was being spoken. I don't know why I said it, but I knew it was the Holy Spirit who made me say those words. And when I came inside, Celia was uh, getting more heavier contractions and all of a sudden doctors came and uh, they said, "Celia, it is time to deliver the baby." And when I heard this I was excited and Celia asked doctor now <laughs> and uh, it was a very beautiful moment and the doctors um, you know put her legs uh, and uh, told her to push and uh, when she was pushing you know uh, the doctor told me see you can see that head of the baby you know honestly um, there's hair on the head so you know I, i i could not see but i guess you know the doctors are so experienced and um, i thought the doctor is just telling me like that just to encourage celia so that she pushes more i said yeah doctor i can see 
and uh, and said is look yeah you can see okay i think it, it gave a great courage to push even more and uh, and within 2 3 minutes uh, you know our son came out and uh, he was born and um, the first thing uh, uh, when i seen him i knew it was it was a boy and um, you know it was uh, such a heart touching moment for for us uh, and all i said was say a 9 months and now you know we have seen a miracle it was truly beautiful truly amazing uh, i wish everyone can experience this a supernatural childbirth first thing that we both could do was to surrender you know when doctor said we don't have much time and she gave us four hours the previous thing that we both did was to surrender we just surrendered and we seen as i mentioned before we seen the word of god fighting for us and from nowhere as the contractions you know started speeding up from no way the doctor comes and you know uh, says zelia it's time to push the baby out and i'm like what because you know previously a, a nurse had said you know now what contractions you are getting is nothing you know there's much more you know there's so much to go and uh, when she says that it's time to push the baby out i'm like are you sure i mean it's like it's like nothing is happening you know and uh, the team just comes in and they you know they set everything and she's saying like come on zelia push <laughs> and i just remember an instance where when i'm asking the doctor doctor am i pushing and the doctor says like you know you're not pushing come on just push the baby is right there you know just push and within no time i'm just telling you in a blink of an eye you know i really call it in a blink of an eye in a blink of an eye the baby comes out and you know something the most beautiful moment i delivered the baby you know speaking in tongues i delivered zef you know praising god and thanking god and that moment is like you know it just like heavenly moment i i just call it a heavenly moment just delivering the baby thanking god you know that dream that vision those nine months you know and it was just right in front of our eyes and it's my desire every woman who's watching me you know every mother who's watching me that you would have this experience in your life that birth is so beautiful god has created so beautiful if you have ever heard birth as a traumatic experience if you ever heard that birth or pregnancy is such a struggle i would say no birth is a total beautiful moment to be cherished all through your life 
before Zeph's birth on ultrasound his weight was shown like uh, 2.6 to 2.7 and at that time I prayed to God and I said the day I deliver the baby his weight should be 3 and that was the first question I asked the nurse when he was taken up for his checkup and the weight was 3.1 and you know there are some few points I would you know I would want you all to focus what really helped Royston and me to you know to get to this finish line point number one is accept that a child is a gift from God accept that a fruit of the womb is a reward from God God is our rewarder you know second thing is make sure you know that you and your husband you know wife and husband are in perfect unity third thing make sure you are connected and you are surrounded with faith filled people fourth thing be focused on the word of god what you hear and what you speak matters what gave us this result is the fruit of what we spoke you know there was there were so many things that came up our way but we chose to speak what we want you know we didn't speak what we seen we seen so many things we could see you know things not really in our favor we could see you know things not really speeding up moving but we didn't put our eyes on that we spoke what we wanted and we got what we spoke and let me speak about the second dream you know when I was uh, delivering Zef, you know, there was a couple in front of me, I mean, doctors, their husband and wife. You know, that entire scene spoke about the second dream that I'd seen even before I would conceive, even before I'd conceived. That was the second dream. The first dream was when I was about to change the doctor. And the second dream was the scene I'd seen exactly what happened during his birth. There was a couple who was, you know, delivering us I mean delivering the baby so there was there is so much of empowerment when couples work together the question that I had for God why you know it was answered now and I and I you know I knew that God had a purpose whatever happened in the first pregnancy in the first childbirth it was in the plan of God it was allowed by God that so that today we sit here and testify how beautiful God has done things for us how beautifully God has designed everything for us you know our bodies and everything how God has beautifully done so no regrets no turning back we are just rejoicing over you know how God has worked and how God has led us and in everything we know that God is in it and even to tell you you know uh, having the shoot of this testimony it was not easy it was a quite a challenging task for us but we know that even in this that God is with us one of my favorite scriptures is Romans chapter 8 28 in all things God works together for good for those who love him what happened four years back it was beyond our control but God allowed it as Zelia has mentioned and because of that situation today you could hear this testimony and that he has turned everything beautiful in his time so no matter what you're facing in your life uh, hold on to his promises because he never fails us so we are going to pray for each and every one of you at this moment uh. if you're praying for a gift of child I just want you to know this that barrenness is absolutely not the will of God God wants you to be fruitful that's his blessing and yes. promise for every woman if you if someone has told you and if you're feeling this in your heart today we want you to be set free yes. from this feeling and know that barrenness is absolutely not the will of God and God is going to reward you with a gift of child because a child is a gift from God and the fruit of the womb is his reward right now every woman who's watching us you know every couple or every pregnant mother if you're in front of your TV screen right now just stretch out your hand as myself and Royston we pray for you all just stretch out your hand and receive this blessing 
Father, in the name of Jesus, right now myself and Royston, we come into an agreement, Lord, and we release a blessing, O oh God, upon every woman who's watching us, yes. every couple who's watching yes. us, every mother who's watching us, Lord. Yes. We release that anointing, O oh God. Yes. We speak to that womb, O oh God. Yes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak to that barren yes. womb to be fruitful in the name of yes. Jesus. We rebuke every spirit of barrenness yes. and we speak fruitfulness. Yes, yes. we speak fruitfulness into yes. their womb, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that they are going to testify, Lord, that it is is you who has blessed them with yes. a gift of a child, oh God. Yes. Every mother who is expecting, we pray, oh God, that they will deliver the baby as quick as easy and as lively as the Hebrew women. We speak the blessing over them, O oh God. We speak this blessing over them, O oh God. Lord, we pray for, a, for the couple, O oh God, together, the husband and wife, O oh Lord, that they will raise up their children to be mighty men and women of God, O oh God. That their children will be mighty in the land, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for every viewer, Lord. All those who have watched this uh, festival, O oh Father. I pray, Lord, that you are going to touch them, O oh Father. Yes, I pray, Lord, that you are going to touch their lives, O oh Lord. Amen. Touch their families, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray, O oh Father, that wombs will open up, O oh Father. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, for supernatural childbirths, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray that people will testify, Lord, through this testimony, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord, we know one thing, O oh Lord, that everything, Lord, has happened for a purpose, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we know one thing, O oh Father, that through this testimony, Lord, that your name is going to be glorified, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we bless all our viewers, O oh Father. We pray, Lord, that in the coming days, Lord, they will experience your goodness, Lord. And we believe, Lord, the best is yet to come for them. We will be the glory forever, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I believe you have been really blessed and I am encouraged. You know, and uh, we would encourage you all, please read this book called Less Supernatural childbirth it's by jackie mirs it's a wonderful book that has really helped me and i know there are a lot of women who have been blessed uh, women who have been blessed by this book so if you get a chance please purchase a copy or even you all can contact us we can give you all a copy but make sure you all you'll read this book this book will really help you all towards the end all what we want to say is we, we surrendered, surrendered and, and it, it was powerful, powerful. When Zelia and Royston first came to us in their third trimester of pregnancy, we could see how motivated they were to have a vaginal birth, even though they had a caesarean for the first time. When it came to Zelia's labor, she was so motivated, she was so calm, and she was completely sure that she could do this. She was accompanied every minute by her husband, Royston, and both of them stayed calm and serene through the entire process. When it was time for the baby to come out, we could feel the palpable excitement and the surety of the situation. In order to have a vaginal delivery after a cesarean section or a VBAC, there are certain medical criteria that you need to meet and you can discuss this with your, doc with your doctor, but it is entirely possible. In fact, it is much safer to have a vaginal delivery than to have repeated caesarean sections. And if you are motivated enough, and if your doctor thinks that it is safe for you, there is no reason why you shouldn't go ahead and try it. <laughs>